Hi, I'm Dr. Boris Watkins from YourBlackWorld.com. Yesterday you saw, uh, some of us saw uh, this week, RG3, Robert Griffin III, who is a phenomenal player out of Washington, D.C. Uh, the, the guy that they were debating about on ESPN as to whether or not he's a real brother or a cornball brother, we don't know the answer to that question, but we do know that he is an amazingly athletic brother, and he has uh, he has really excited uh, Washington, D.C. with his play. Now, uh, he had some uh, issues with injury recently, and it led to some controversy. And uh, a, a guy that I respect, who I know is a real brother, uh, by the name of Eton Thomas, who is a, a former NBA player and the author of the book Fatherhood, The Ultimate Challenge, uh, he wrote an open letter to RG3 in the Washington Post this week. And I, I wanted to talk to him about that and kind of allow you to hear, uh, in his words, uh, the intent behind the letter. So I want to say uh, hello to Eton. How you doing today, brother? Uh, how you doing, sir? Doing very well, man. So I want to know, so, so your letter, I, I read your letter. It was a very good letter. And you were kind oh, of talking you. to, to you yeah, know, no problem. You, you were talking to RG3 kind of, um, you know, brother-to-brother, athlete-to-athlete, and kind of giving him some advice on how to deal with injury and the uh, motivation slash temptation slash pressure to play through pain. Uh, can you describe uh, what you were saying to him in this letter? Well, you know, I, I understand the, the tough position that he was in. I mean, you know, I don't know what it's like to have an entire city pretty much just focused on you and, the, and the, your ability and, and for your team to – to either win or lose pretty much is depending on you. That's a lot of pressure, you know, to have it as a professional athlete. And, um, you know, it, it was tough seeing. It was tough seeing because I saw he wasn't right, and my son saw he wasn't right. My son is a huge RG3 fan. And I talk about in the letter that my son from the first nap, he's like, he's like, um, you know, RG3 is hurting. He's like, why, why is he moving like that? Then, then he would ask, he's like, well, wait a minute, he's obviously hurting. He said it through the whole game. And he said, well, wait a minute now, if he's, if he's limping like that and he's in pain, can he hurt it more? He's asking all these questions. And then they join the close-ups of his face, and, he, and my son is saying, wait a minute now, if he's in that much pain, why is he still in the game? And my son was really concerned. And then at the end of the game, that happened, and my son was devastated. And it was like, you know, for, for a seven-year-old uh, boy to be able to see that, you know, and see that he, could, he shouldn't have been in the game, how could the coach not see it? But then it goes back to, you know, it, was the coach really worried about that, or was he worried about his 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 um his well being, or just really just trying to win the game at all costs? And we know the answer to it. But my 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 reason for doing the letter was just pretty much to 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 tell RG three, you know, you you have a long career ahead of you. You know what I mean? Like you can't let them run you into the ground. And I'm and I'm saying it. I know the pressure that that must have been on him. I know the and you know football. You're supposed to you know, play through the pain and not feel pain and you're a gladiator and you know you know what I mean, hopping there with one with one lung if you if you can finish the game. I, I understand that, but but he they're gonna run him into the ground. You know, he's just starting. He's a rookie. He has a long well, you, career ahead of him. <laughs> well you know that, that is interesting. So my, yeah. You know it, it, you know it's funny you, you bring that up because I, I know a lot of guys who yeah and you do too who uh, once played in the NFL, who, who pretty much gave their lives uh, to football, whether it was at the college level or the professional level. And many of these guys, their careers were very short, maybe two or three years. And they literally paid the price for that for the rest of their lives, especially if they get involved in uh, taking all these anti-inflammatories and steroids and everything else that allowed them to fight through the pain. You know, remember, when, when, when you are playing through pain, in many cases, they're giving you unhealthy medication to keep you from feeling the pain. Uh, and, but eventually, you do feel it. Uh, you know, when you're walking around at 40 years old, feeling like you're 85 years old, and, and you, we, I mean, we're not even talking about the brain damage that some of these guys have experienced. You know, so, uh, you know, when you talk about what happened with RG3, and, and I read your letter, and I think other people should read it, because it was a, it was a very respectful letter. You were respectful to, to pretty much everybody involved in this. Uh, my question to you is this: Do you think that it was a matter of uh, of RG three himself wanting to go out there no matter what, or do you think uh, how much of the blame should be placed on Shanahan? I mean, if RG three is a grown man and makes his own decisions, uh, you know, should should that responsibility be placed on him, or do you think Shanahan and the Redskins organization deserve some of the responsibility of this? 
Well, I think they deserve the bulk of the responsibility because, for one, you have to rely on the doctors. Now, the doctors examine you, and they either tell you that you're going to injure this more if you continue or you're not. It's very clear. It's not, there's no there's no grave matter. And for what he had and what was going on, it was very clear that if you would continue, you're going to injure it. Now, it, the the part that is the, the, the question now is when Shannon doctor cleared him, and the doctor said, wait a minute, I didn't clear anybody. You know, I, mean, I didn't even examine him mm. talking about dating back to the to the game um, uh, December 9th uh, Ravens, against right. Ravens. Right, Ravens, right, against Ravens. And so now you're looking at a case, well, okay, well, it was Shanahan even confirmed about him at all? And the answer was is obviously no. But for the doctor to say and say that, wait a minute, I never even examined him. So that just tells you he shouldn't have been playing. And then you look at the time period of how, how long he wasn't cleared to play. You know what I mean? So that that comes to negligence of a of an entire franchise. You know, and and that's it, it, it's a tough position for somebody like RG three to be in. But my and I think it's a lesson as well for 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 not only him but all athletes to know that they don't really care about you. <laughs> that's that's basically what it is. They do not care about you, and you have to care about yourself. So sometimes you have to say, I can't go. I I cannot I cannot go. Because they will have you out there playing and, and when you shouldn't be playing, and then after you're injured, they'll push you to the side and go on to the next person. I've seen it happen well, more and more and more times over and over again. And he, he is too talented of a player to allow something like that. He's just starting. This is his rookie year, you know? I mean, and I, I hate to see it happening, but you can just see by the way that they play, they don't really care about it. Well, you know, I, I think that this is a lesson uh, that people should listen to, whether you're talking about a professional athlete or even that college student where the coach is telling you not to study for your exams because you have to get ready for the big game. Uh, remember, your future belongs to you, and you're the one that's going to bear the consequences or the benefits of the choices you make. So uh, it's important that you take ownership in who you are and to protect yourself, protect your investments, uh, because, as you mentioned, these franchises don't care about you. It is a business. You are a commodity. Uh, you're not Definitely. quite a slave. We can't, we can't compare it to slavery, but you right. you are pretty much flesh for cash. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's slavery that's was. So, so, yeah, so guys have to understand that. Well, thank you uh, very much for your time, Etan. I, I really appreciate your perspective. Well, thanks for having me, and I'm a, I'm a Redskins fan, and my son's a Redskins fan, and RG3 fan, so we're 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 rooting for him. We're down there rooting for him this season, and we're rooting for him next season. All right, go Redskins. All right, well, uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, for checking us out uh, at yourblackworld.com. Uh, on the line, this was Etan Thomas. He is the author of Fatherhood, The Ultimate Challenge. Uh, I participated in a fatherhood panel with him uh, along with some other uh, esteemed individuals in New York. We're going to do the same thing in Chicago pretty soon, so if you live in the city, I hope you can come out. And until we meet again, please stay strong, be blessed, and be educated. We are gone. Peace.